government has introduced safe harbor system for diamond sector for diamond sector for diamond sector now the whole game is about safe harbor system let's see what is safe harbor system aapko pata hai bachcho there is one thing beautiful about this exam the moment you see a word called as safe harbor system i'll tell you the difference between you guys who prepares for upsc and those who do not generally prepare for any kind of competitive exam i'll tell you in fact i can give my example also till the time i started to learn four five subjects in my life for various purposes for phd for management etc etc i did not know what is the connection between two things which is happening around me no idea but the moment you start to study four five subjects together automatically you start to see acha this is happening because there are four problems which are compelling the government to take this action example safe harbor rules why the government of india needed to bring something so complicated for india safe harbor rules because there must be something terrible which is happening and to control government needed something which is complex so that is the reason so let's go little uh, you know deeper into the background is chal kya raha what is happening in this country so that example is this example ye dekhe <clears throat> have a look at this please i have taken one example which might be real who knows so you are smart you know it so there is something called as apple panama so i'm going to tell you this i'm going to tell you the story of a company called as apple might be true might not be true i don't know But you are smart you know it so <clears throat> see what has apple done guys so i belong to us listen to the story carefully and see what is actually happening i belong to us so my company actually belongs to us originally what did i do i opened two branches of my company two more branches one is apple panama panama island why because panama island is very famous for almost zero taxes it's a tax heaven what is the beauty of tax heaven so this question has been asked in upsc prelims and mains both that following are the features of tax heaven so what is the feature of tax heaven i'll tell you so the moment apple opened its branch in apple panama opened a new company it registered this company in the name of somebody put some money in the company in panama so they went to panama apple they opened a company called apple panama they put some dollars inside it and they said that some activities are happening in my apple panama now if being an indian even if indian prime minister goes to panama and says can you please tell me who is the owner of apple panama this country panama will tell you no panama elite they will tell you no we don't reveal the name of the owners even if you put pressure over them and tell them acha tell us how much money is there in the account of apple panama they won't tell you these things why because there is a clause called as secrecy clause to maintain this so whenever somebody opens a company in these kind of uh, tax havens there is something called secrecy clause which is signed so you keep asking them as an indian you go there and ask them hey tell us who is the owner of this they will tell you sorry we don't share information tell them what is a the dollar they won't tell you in fact simple question boss just tell us one thing which economic activity is apple panama doing in panama they won't even answer that and if you ask them a question that can you please tell me what is going on inside this company i just want to see they will tell you sorry we can't reveal they won't even tell you the address wo to hai nahi i mean there's no address they won't tell you the address right secrecy clause so what has apple done very interestingly apple opens a company called as apple panama and then apple comes to india and apple opens a company called apple india so they open a branch in india also apple india which they are producing the iphones here so they opened a company called apple india now look at the game which is going on ha huh? see <clears throat> i'm not saying necessarily it is happening but i don't know so see <clears throat> that's for apple india that's for apple panama so according to apple let, let's take a hypothetical case according to apple the design of the iphone which iphone is coming 16 ha huh. so the design of the iphone 16 is coming from panama to india look at this please the design is coming from here to here what is the normal price of designs of mobile phone normal price is 1 crore if you ask samsung that samsung how much money did you pay to your engineer just to make one change in the design oh apple mein to yahi hota hai there will be one dot this year next year there won't be any dot camera on the left side camera will be slightly 10 degrees on the northeast side this is what happens so apple keeps on doing this only one dot here one dot there one shift there one shift there you know that is what and for that they pay 1 crore rupees to their scientist here and the scientist is enjoying his life here hypothetical scientist 1 crore rupees ab dekho what has happened that 1 crore rupee will be paid by apple india who is paying this 1 crore rupees apple india and who is giving design to apple india for iphone 16 apple panama so now suppose that if you ask apple india that apple india this year what is your revenue so apple india said 101 crore 
मतलब एप्पल इंडिया सोल्ड मोबाइल फोन इन इंडिया दिस फोन एप्पल इंडिया इज सेलिंग मोबाइल फोन इन इंडिया एंड कलेक्टिंग हंड्रेड वन करोर रेवेन्यू नो इफ यू आस्क एप्पल India, Apple India, that Apple India, can you please tell us what is the cost of production? So suppose I am moving all the salary, salary, sab kuch. I am assuming it to be negligible, nothing. For the timing, I can take some number, but man, lo that salary they pay is very less, etc., etc. But the major charge they are showing to the government one crore rupees, which is the cost of design. That's the major component. Suppose one crore, one lakh, aisa kuch. So one crore. What is the profit? Profit is hundred crore. So Apple is saying, "This is my cost. This is my revenue. This is my profit." Government says, "Oh, according to new budget, the tax on the companies, which are multinationals, which are in India, is 35 percent." So they are saying 35 percent. So 35 percent of 100 crore, 35 crore. This should be our tax. This government should have collected, है ना? Government should have collected this tax. And where should the government keep this tax? Government should keep this tax here, 35 crores. This is our tax base. This is the box. Which we should fill. Apple realizes, no, I don't want to do that because India is charging too much of tax. What does Apple do? See, Apple says, no, no. One crore was the previous cost, but iPhone 16 is revolutionary because the position of the dot has changed. So that is why the design of the iPhone is costing hundred crores. That's the price of the design. I, my life, my rules. Remember your Facebook? What do you call it? Whatever you put on the Facebook, right? Or tagline. So design hundred crores, ah. Huh? So now how do things change? Look at this side. Your revenue is hundred one crore. Your cost is hundred crore. Why? Because you are paying hundred crore rupees to Apple Panama. That's your cost. So your revenue hundred crore. Cost this. That's your profit. How much tax do you pay? Thirty five percent of this. Thirty five lakhs. So from thirty five crore, you are paying thirty five lakh rupees. Welcome to India. So what have you done? ये देखिए बच्चों, 99 crore profit shifted. What have you done? You have shifted 99 crore because earlier this 100 crore, this profit was staying in India. This 100 crore profit was in India. Now how much profit is there? One crore, 99 shifted. 99 crore gone. And how much tax is government getting now? 35 lakhs. Ideally, what should be our tax? 35 crores. Because the actual price of the design was only one crore, but Apple inflated it. Pay to the price that no no design price is hundred crore, so this should be our tax. But this is the real tax. So do thirty five crore minus thirty five lakh. If you subtract it, that's the loss for India, and that loss is this thirty four point six five crores. That's the loss. So if you want to show this through pictures, how will you show this? Here, see, this is thirty five crore that should have stayed in India, isn't it? But what is the, and how much of the profit hundred crore should have been the profit of Apple within India? But what does Apple do? See, how much is Apple taking out of India? Ninety-nine crore. Apple just took out ninety-nine crore out of India. So ideally, hundred crore should have left. But what does Apple do? Apple says, no, no, India, I will keep only this. I am taking this from you, and this is added to Panama. This becomes Panama's money. Why? Because earlier Apple was charging one crore from India, so India was paying one crore. But how much is India paying now? Now India is paying hundred crore for the same design. Ideal price one, but we are paying hundred. How much extra are we paying? Ninety nine. So that ninety nine from India is going away. So the moment it goes away, it is added here. And how much tax is being paid by Apple Panama here? Almost zero percent. So what has happened? so in this method two three things have happened your profit has been shifted and because of profit shifting what has happened your tax base has reduced if you combine these words you get something called as base erosion because tax base has been eroded this part gone base erosion and profit Shifting, that's called as BEPS, base erosion, profit shifting. So if somebody will ask you that, beta, yes, sir, all this is fine, but what are the technical terms involved here? So look at the technical terms which are involved from current affairs perspective. This one crore rupees that you see, guys, look very carefully, bacho. 
this one crore rupees that you see it has a very nice name the name of this one crore rupees is called as arms length price what is the name of this 100 crore the name of this 100 crore is called as transfer price so we have already got two prices huh? i'll tell you the definition this is called arms length price this is transfer price if you indulge in a very high transfer price it leads to base erosion and profit shifting so if somebody will ask you a question that can you please tell us how to do base erosion and profit shifting in a country like india how to go about it so you simply have to say keep smiling and just tell the person you just need to do one thing don't follow arms length price start following transfer pricing BEPFs will happen. If you are the tax inspector of India, government of India tells you better catch this person, who this person is. What will you do? How will you find out if something illegal is going on? Very simple. You please calculate what is this through some formula, which I'll tell you. Through some method, you calculate this. And through some method, you also find out this. Yeto already you know because it is happening in India. You just have to calculate this. If there is too much difference between this, you will say something is wrong. And then you will come to this company, this and this company, and you will say, I'm going to put penalty over you. So then they will start to ask you that what is wrong? This is our normal price. You will tell them now, this is not the normal price. This is the normal price. This is your inflated price. There is too much difference. If this price would have been 1.1 crore, if it's okay, 1.2 crore, okay. 1.3 crore is also okay, 30 percent higher. But how can one crore be 100 crore? This is not okay. So if there is too much difference between arms length price and transfer price, that's not okay. So what has government of India done for diamond industry in India? Something beautiful. It's visible there. This is a country, for example, let's say Namibia or let's say Canada, who is sending raw diamonds to us. And this company in India is the friend of this company. They two are friends, long time friends. And how do you know they are friends? I'll give an example. Suppose the owner of this company, look carefully, Bacho, the owner of this company has 25, 26, 27% shares of this company. Shares of this company. Or suppose somebody who is a relative of the owner of this company is in the board of director of this company. What is board of director? The highest decision making authority of the company. So if the top bosses of this company have shares here or the bosses of this company have shares here, that means obviously they are connected. So if they are connected, then government of India will come to both of them and tell them, don't try to fool us because we know you are connected through shares, through decision making, or maybe the son of this is married to the daughter of that. That is also possible. That is also a connection. So these things are called connected companies, right? So what is the technical name of these type of companies? Associated enterprise, because they are connected. And I just gave you three methods of connection. First is one company has some shares in the other company. And according to government of India's income tax acts, at least 26% share of one company must be there in another. So somebody from here must have bought at least 26% shares or somebody from here should have bought at least 26% here through voting rights. The second is that most of the board of directors of this company should have been appointed by them. Malab, they are deciding who will be the board of director or they should decide who will be the board of director there. That means they're definitely connected or that marriage alliance also is taken to be connection. So if you find these things in India, so let's say they are the diamond supplier and this is in Surat, somebody is buying the diamond. Government of India in this budget has said that you, Mr. Supplier of diamond and you, Mr. Importer of diamond, if you want that government should not trouble you, let's sign an agreement that for next five years, example, for next five years, whenever you put a price like this, so suppose you supply raw diamond and you give the price, government of India said that whatever will be the normal market price in other countries, if your price is up to 20% higher, only up to 20% higher, then I'm not going to punish you. I will not initiate any action against you. There will be no audits. There will be nothing because you are in the range of 20%. So if the global price of diamond is 1 crore, India is getting the diamond. 
suppose from here one crore is going there government says that's perfect even if the price of the diamond is 1.2 crore suppose normal price of diamond is 1 crore but india is giving 1.2 crore so extra price we are giving to them so even then government of india says if it is up to 20% no problem 25% no problem but if you are paying a price which is very high like this like apple is doing then so i'll put a case against you so this safe harbor system means that whenever somebody some mining company is supplying diamonds to india in gujarat or elsewhere in india then whatever price they are charging it is transfer pricing we know that suppose they are related even in this case we will not punish them if we feel that the transfer pricing that they have charged is within certain range so if it is beyond that range then we are going to punish them abhi sawal aata hai what is that range government has not declared for diamonds the government has not declared the range people are asking government tell us what should be the range that how much higher price will you tolerate if the price of diamond that comes to india is 1 crore up to what point will you tolerate government says that we will let you know soon but in india guys <clears throat> if you ask me i have read uh, different sectors and i have seen normally the range that government tolerates is 20 to 30% on an average so if i am uh, let's belonging to surat gujarat and i am importing diamond from africa and price of the diamond is let's say 1 crore rupees but if i am paying because that trend so what am i doing instead of 1 crore i am paying 1 crore 20 lakhs i am paying 20 lakhs extra so that 20 lakhs he will get in his country the tax rates are very low 0.1% something like that close to zero so what will he do for me he will keep my money then he will transfer my money in my swiss account and when i go for euro vacation i will withdraw the money switzerland is a tax haven so what what are these people doing from here some of them their friend is supplying diamond they are paying higher price this friend says you pay me the higher price i'll deposit the money in swiss account who swiss account the indians swiss account so government of india is saying beta if you pay higher price up to 20% i will tolerate uske baad i'll take action so this system is called as safe harbor rules difficult or easy it's easy so please write likhata hu aapko what is transfer pricing so please write transfer pricing transfer pricing bachcho please answer a question Uh, then i'll give you the dictation what are the two types of companies that i taught you indirectly today two types of companies one are associated companies matlab related companies so opposite of related would be related opposite would be unrelated so there are two types of companies related unrelated so if these two are related companies which price will they charge arms length or transfer transfer and if two companies are not related will they do favors against uh, for each other no what price will they charge arms length arms length means this is the arm this is the length so if somebody stands here he is not related to me that's why arms length but if somebody is related to me they'll stand next to me so please write transfer pricing transfer pricing is charged is charged in transactions in transactions involving in transactions involving related enterprise related enterprise or associated companies associated companies fine associated companies and then please write the definition of arms length price it's very easy guys arms length price how will you write the definition of arms length price can somebody tell me arms length price is the price between unrelated companies so please write arms length price is the price between unrelated companies unrelated companies please put a full stop <clears throat> now so guys uh, what is base erosion and profit shifting if that question will be asked by somebody how will you answer the question what is beps is beps good or bad should beps happen no it's bad because india's profit is going away so please write that beps reside beps beps please write that <clears throat> bps includes all those practices all those practices 
through which all those practices through which a company from one country a company from one country shifts its profits to another country to another country where where the tax rates are very low very low or close to zero or close to zero close to zero so guys if somebody will ask you a question that why does this company apple why does this company apple india they transfer their profit to panama because the taxes in panama are very low or close to zero so whenever your taxes are very low or close to zero what is the name of that country tax heavens tax heaven so in the bracket you can write tax heaven it's heaven for taxes because you don't have to pay a tax tax heaven acha whenever you say zero tax it's not actually zero it's close to zero it could be 0.1% 0.2% so it's not zero but it's very close to zero so that's your tax heaven okay now i have a big question for you and this is the question which will be asked in upsc mains as an is officer or as the future policy makers of india can you please tell us what are the steps that government has already taken to control this behavior called beps or can you suggest something from your side that government should be doing to control beps this could be a future question for mains so guys isko dekhiye look carefully at the board the answer is hidden here what is the answer the first thing that the government should do is i'll i'll tell you a real life scenario which happened i remember that uh, in the year 1999 2000 so government of india cbdt central board for direct taxes they went to supreme court and they told supreme court at supreme court Uh, some company is doing like this they are increasing the price of the raw material so that they can take the money out of india supreme court said that how do you call it illegal so tax authority said because this is abnormal increase in price supreme court said no no it's not normal or abnormal please show me a rule or a law or act of the parliament where it is written that this is crime wo dikhaiye so then cbdt said we don't have it so immediately supreme court said if you can't prove it because there is no law there is no act of the parliament how can you call it illegal show me the legal thing then i will call it illegal government did not have an answer so in the year 2001 for the first time the government of india passed a regulation called as transfer pricing regulation and in that regulation we mentioned that whenever there is an increase abrupt increase in price of the raw material design etc beyond a certain range then we call it transfer pricing which means we defined a range we said ideal price 1 crore 100 crore is abnormal normally it could have been from 1 crore 1.2 crore 1.3 crore that's it so please write transfer pricing regulation came in india transfer pricing regulation came in india in 2001 in 2001 <clears throat> now guys see something very interesting ha huh? this you will understand and then uh, you would immediately start to see acha this is what india has done see think like an officer now you are an is officer to my online and offline friends imagine you are an officer abhi aapse puchunga i'll ask you and please answer the question you have just made a rule guys be focused please you have just made a rule that this transfer pricing in india will be illegal and you have told every company across the world apple panama that hey mr apple panama don't charge 100 crore instead of 100 crore if you charge 1.2 crore then i will call it as legal if you charge anything more than 1.2 crore illegal apple panama immediately would ask you government of india can you please tell us how do you calculate this how do you know what is arms length price and why have you kept this range as 1.2 why not 1.21 tell us immediately government of india got in trouble hai ye kya ho gaya how does how did it happen we don't know how to calculate this because there must be a formula to calculate it can't be abrupt and then they started to tell the moment government of india used to tell them beta this 1.2 ke upar if you go we'll put a fine against you so they said no we will charge 1.3 1.3 crore for the design apple said apple panama charge 1.3 crore from india india immediately put a penalty and said no no this is greater than 1.2 they went to the court of india they filed a case in india this company apple india filed a case 
what was written in that case that what is the exact formula of this 1.2 because it can't be 1.2 it can be 1.3 also we want to know the formula which economic policy which system which formula are they following so a lot of litigations happen in india government of india felt very disturbed that god every time we are taking an action some litigation is happening so then the government of india said hold we are going to have a clear cut system that we are going to offer a few things to these two companies few mechanisms to these companies they have to select one of the mechanisms if they follow that mechanism we will never put any penalty over them if they go against the mechanism we'll put a penalty so instead of arbitrary transfer pricing formula government said no 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 formula government said i will give you three schemes or two schemes if you go by the scheme i will never trouble you if you go against the scheme and you select which scheme do you want if you go against the scheme i'll torture you this is also okay which are the schemes which means every scheme that i am going to tell you now in next 2 minutes is a scheme under transfer pricing so government has designed some schemes within transfer pricing so that this should never happen this 1 crore should never become 100 crores what are those schemes ye dekhiye <clears throat> and this is exactly what you have to write in your exam so aap likhenge please write solution to solution to bps in india solution to bps in india bps in india what is bps base erosion and profit shifting what are the solution guys the solutions are very precise so if you write these solutions with two two lines in terms of explanation you will get very good marks in the exam but see do you see a flow in the story that first we found out transfer pricing arms length price and then government started to punish everybody that hey your transfer price is greater than arms length 100 crore is greater than 1 crore lot of litigation happened unnecessary tussle happened then government said hold on let's go by this scheme actually these are schemes so please write number 1 advance pricing agreement very popular one advance pricing agreement advance pricing agreement when did it come 2000 12 advanced pricing agreement 2012 i will tell you what happens under this listen to it carefully please <clears throat> i'll show you this picture is very simple it was super simple that's your apple panama the exporter we are the importer theek hai apple india is the importer so what this importer used to do is this importer signs an agreement with government of india and tells the government that government for next 5 years either it is 3 years or 5 years government decides so for example let's say 5 years is the common in india so for next 5 years based on the price of design raw material inflation so this company tells the government of india apple india that for next 5 years i am going to charge this i am going to pay because apple india pays to them so this company said i am going to pay this much money every year to them so this year 1 crore next year 1.2 crore because inflation next year 1.3 next year 1.4 next year 1.5 so you yourself have to tell that this is the honest price but i want to pay 10 lakhs extra no problem if government feels that 10 lakhs is not too extra so there is negotiation on case to case basis so government of india will say chalo theek hai you pay 10% extra but not beyond that or 20% extra but not beyond that so is tarah se for every year government of india has a written agreement with them that every year how much price are they going to pay to them 1 1.1 crore 1.2 crore this is called advance price agreement if you violate this heavy penalty over you but now the question that is asked is how do you calculate how much extra can they pay so that extra that they can pay to them is calculated on the basis of international price of for example this design so let's say that the international price of this design let's say for samsung it is 1.4 crores let's say for xiaomi it's 1.2 crores if you take an average of 1.4 1.2 take an average becomes 1.3 so 1.3 average becomes international price so government says you mr chalo theek hai you can pay up to 1.3 average so this is called advance price agreement and its validity is up to a given period of time normally 5 years who signs this contract not them they and the government of india precisely they and cbdt so please write that under it the taxpayer and the tax authorities 
taxpayer and the tax authority in the bracket CBDT sign an agreement sign an agreement about the acceptable transfer pricing about the acceptable transfer pricing rule for a given time period for a given time period like five years like five years what is the problem in this method i told you that the average is taken average is never a good representation of any number i'll give an example suppose bacho i appear in one mock test you appear in one mock test online or offline i get a zero in the exam you get 100 out of 100 what is the average 50 zero plus 100 divided by 2 so this online and offline suppose is one unit that is you the students and the faculty faculty gets zero students are hero i mean 100 so 0 plus 100 divided by 250, average of us is 50. So when somebody from outside will come in the class and they will ask us, say, how did you score? You will feel so demotivated that you will not tell your score, average, because they are asking average, they are not asking your score. Since your is 100, but average is 50. So you will say, don't ask, I will be super excited. The moment somebody enters, I will say, you know, the average score of the class, 50, right? So here also, what are you doing? You are telling the companies, calculate global average, pay the price. The companies are saying average may not be good. How to calculate average? Why did you take average? Lot of tussles started. Government said, hold, 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 hold. Abhi no average. Then we started a new system, which is called a safe harbor system. That's the second system we started. So they go, what is safe harbor system? Bacho? And how do you prepare for both prelims and main? Mains ke liye to dictation I will, I'll provide you. But for prelims, you should know which year was it proposed. So see, 2009. This is for the first time that India started to experiment with this idea that we can have something like this. But 2013 is exactly the time when the rules started in India. And in 2024 budget, the government of India has extended this policy to diamond sector. Earlier, it was meant for IT, automobile, steel industry, but for the first time for diamond sector. Now, which are the committees or which is that committee which gave a recommendation to the government about this? They it's written. So it says Rangachari committee. And Rangachari committee, they gave this recommendation to government of India in 2013. It started based on their recommendation. So guys, when you prepare for this exam, for main stories, points are okay. But for prelims, you should know these kind of committee also. Ab dekho ye hai kya? What is this? Listen to it carefully. <clears throat> Safe harbor rules. Huh? See. So what has happened is, very simple. Look carefully, bacho. So suppose that, in fact, let me give new example to you. So suppose this is Namibia. Namibia say we get little bit of diamond or it could be Canada. And this is India. So suppose there is a factory in India which is getting diamonds from Namibia. And these diamonds are coming at, let's say, 1 crore rupees. Now, <clears throat> or let's say, let's change the numbers a bit. Instead of 1 crore, let's call it at, let's say, 40 lakhs. It is coming to India. Now, this factory pays salary, etc., etc., workers, electricity bill, 60 lakhs. Right. So, 40 lakhs is the cost of raw diamond. 60 lakhs is the operating cost, means day-to-day -day expenditure in this factory. So, what is the cost of production of polished diamonds, which are to be sold? 40 plus 60, 1 crore. 1 crore is the price of the diamond. Now, they will put some profit. So now government of India is saying that beta, please calculate your price. This should be the normal price and this should be the cost. I want to see how much is your cost. Again, this company started to say, government, you know, the price is very high. Government said, hold on. Don't tell me this. Forget about that. Just tell me what is your operating cost of this factory in India, which means electricity bill, etc., etc., etc. All these things you please tell me. So this company said, my operating cost is 60 lakhs. Government of India said, cool, now your operating cost is fixed. Now government of India said, I am going to travel globally and find out what is the average price of this type of diamond in all the countries of the world where it is happening. We have the data. So we found out that the average price of this type of diamond is roughly 40 to 50 lakhs. It could be 40 lakhs, it could be 50 lakhs, the diamond which is coming. 
So government of India said that's arm's length price because globally we are seeing that price. So government said, see, it's either it could be 40, it could be 50. I'm going to take one average, 45 lakhs. So now government said, I'm going to add it here. So 60 plus 45, 1 crore, 5 lakhs. Now government of India said, this is only your cost because your salary that you are paying, etc. is this, and this is your average cost of the diamond. So government said, 1 crore, 5 lakhs. Now government of India said, I'm going to give you a certain percentage. So now government of India has a list of various sectors along with the percentage profit allowed. So government said for diamond, Abhi, government has not declared the profit, but for software industry, the profit which is allowed is 25%. So if India is buying anything, a software from another country to India, and then India is making some changes in the software and then India is selling it. Is there some business is going on? So the moment you buy any software product in India, so suppose that you go to China, you go to Vietnam and buy any software. So government says in that, whatever money you are paying to that country, Uske upar government said you can charge a profit of 25%. So if you are buying raw diamonds and then you are paying a salary electricity bill of 60 lakhs, 45 lakhs is the price of the diamond. 45 plus 60, 1 crore, 5 lakhs. Government says, Uske upar, please add 20% extra, which is roughly around 1 crore, 21 lakhs, 25 lakhs, something like that you are allowed to pay. This price you should pay for next two years. For next three years, government will tell you the time period during which you should pay this. And government of India said, if you want to pay less than this, no problem. But you cannot pay more than this. So for every item, gold price is fixed. How much can you pay? Diamond price is fixed. So for every item, the government fixes the price for one year, two year, three year, not five years. One year, two year, three year, one year, two year, three year. Because every one year or two year, government changes the profit. Like government might feel that nahi, nahi, abhi to more profit should be given. So they might increase the profit from 25 to 35%, 45. So you buy the rough diamonds, you add cost, then whatever it becomes, 1 crore, then 25% extra. So 1.25 crore you can pay to them. This system, if you follow, government of India is giving a written promise. And I am giving a written promise to you. I will never come and do the audit. You just need to send your reports to me. So government of India is saying, I will never do the audit. I will only look at the digital documents that you submit and I will trust you. Why is the government doing this? The government is doing this so that when government used to come and haunt them that, hey, how much did you pay? Why did you collect this much money? What did you do? Why this much price? So they used to be so angry, it used to increase the cost. And then what happened is these people started to say, we will not give you diamonds because your government is constantly contacting us. So government of India is saying, you, mister, you want to sell in India, just charge 25% profit over your cost and then go away. We are not going to trouble you. No audits for you, nothing. We believe that you are following the system. So this has been done by government of India to motivate those people to come more to India and to motivate them that you also please take rest. We are not going to penalize you. So this is to give that relief to them emotionally. So government has followed the system. This is called safe harbor rule. So, Bacho, <clears throat> what are we going to write here? Please write. Safe harbor, safe harbor is a system. Safe harbor is a system under which the government provides the government provides a certain range. of transfer pricing, certain range of transfer pricing to the companies if they follow that range, if they follow that range, the government accepts it accepts it and does not put them and does not put them under extra under extra audit mechanism or scrutiny audit mechanism or scrutiny Achha, tell me one thing 
गवर्नमेंट हैज सेड वन पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट मतलब ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट प्रॉफिट यू कैन चार्ज बट सपोज ग्लोबल प्राइस ऑफ डायमंड हैज इंक्रीज विल द गवर्नमेंट कंसिडर दैट दे विल फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी इज देयर दैट्स वाई वन ईयर टू ईयर एट अ टाइम दैट्स दैट्स वाई नॉट फाइव ईयर्स एट अ टाइम गवर्नमेंट सेज इफ यू वॉन्ट एवरी ईयर वी कैन एग्जामिन इफ यू नीड मोर प्रॉफिट वी कैन इंक्रीज योर प्रॉफिट ऑल्सो so every year renegotiable every year every two years renegotiable that is what has been done in the diamond government is not fixing anything for rigidity is not there it's flexible so that's your mechanism but ek problem hai in this entire system what did i tell you government goes across the world and finds the arms length price government goes across the world and says i want to find the price of diamond as if any anybody and everybody is going to share the data with the government right so difficult to go to the world and say give me data i want to find the price it's very difficult ab jaiye go to any store in india to buy grocery items and tell them i don't have to buy the item i just want to find the price indian grocery store will not tell you the price unless you buy something if they sense that you have come for audit they will not tell you the price and this is country to country why will somebody share the data with us so what is the government of india doing government of india is a member of there is a project by oecd or g20 this project gave something called as beps project so this oecd and g20 they gave something to india called as beps project or oecd project in this project what has been done is 15 points have been laid down by this oecd countries what have oecd countries done they have given a list of 15 points and they have said if anybody would like to be a member of this beps project so for example let's say india and us is a member of the beps project one of the points under those 15 points says that any time india can call us us can call india and they can demand that can you please share the financial details limited financial details of one particular company which is doing business in india and us and both these countries will have to share that information so that is called as country by country reporting so under this clause country by country reporting of bps project who started beps project g20 oecd and when was this list of 15 points given by beps list was given in 2016 is india a member of that project yes so what are they saying they are saying that in this list of 15 points one of the points which is mentioned is that if you are a part of the project data sharing becomes smooth and compulsory so now more than 140 countries are a part, part of it and all these multinationals that you see they belong to these 140 countries so india constantly keeps on calling them and tells them can you share the data of what is the price of diamond in your country how many taxes they are paying etc etc all the financial data india collects and they collect the data from india this is how we know what is arms length price this part is very important so please write the next part that under beps project under beps project 2016 2016 2016 15 points 15 15 points have been mentioned 15 points have been mentioned one of the points relates to country by country reporting country by country reporting according to which according to which the data sharing between the members data sharing between the members is smooth is smooth and available on demand and available on demand bachcho can you tell me one thing who gave us equalization levy google tax how did we start google tax somebody would have given this concept to us ye kahan se aa gaya who gave us google tax beps project under beps project i told you 15 points are there 1 2 3 4 karke 15 so one of the points points number 13 is this point and one of the points let's say point number 4th is equalization levy india is a part of it so india said i am going to use this point also so when we started this point many countries started to say why did you do that we said what are you saying you are also a member of beps project we are also a member beps project itself says there should be equalization levy that is why we are doing this so beps project has 15 points one of the points says
country by country reporting one of the points says equalization levy should be there and one of the points also says transfer pricing should be stopped hence india has started to make this arms length price rule advance price agreement safe harbor all this that india is doing is under beps project so you should write this as a note it will help you so please write that under beps project you can write it as extra note under beps project some important provisions are some important provisions are equalization levy number 2 transfer pricing transfer pricing number 3 data sharing data sharing data sharing so guys <clears throat> i want to show you one mains question that's your mains question so what does the question say isko karte hain let's do this question let us see if we can apply this knowledge in solving this so <clears throat> question says explain beps that's your first question typical upsc type question second part says that how can advance pricing agreement and safe harbor system safeguard against mnc's unfettered quest for beps especially in developing economies 10 marks 150 words what does the question say the first part of the question is saying explain beps aapko batana hai that what is the definition of beps the second part is saying i taught you something see guys how to answer this type of question the first part says you have to explain beps then i told you that under beps what is happening transfer pricing is happening because through transfer pricing only beps is happening so we are saying this we have explained through the definition then we are saying that to carry this countries follow this policy called transfer pricing mncs come here 1 crore ka cheez they are charging 100 crore and this is how they do this then what did we study today that under transfer pricing we started it in india in 2001 and under it we have done two three things the first thing we have done is advance pricing agreement the second thing that we have done is safe harbor system under advance pricing a fixed price is decided and okay this will be done under safe harbor system government gives a guideline that you can have a profit in the range of 20 to 25% something like that fixed price is not given a range is given so you can price your uh, product accordingly and the third is country by country reporting and then we said that ye sab kahan se aaya from where are we getting all this beps we are getting all this from beps project report 2016 so we are saying all this in fact in a very subtle manner we said that india should cover more sectors under this safe harbor why because government of india finds it so difficult every time there is a supreme court case you take a tell a company that you are doing something wrong they will file a case against you now government of india is busy that company is busy wastage of time and to find out who is the culprit government has to spend so much of resources the tax authorities have to waste so much of money time so government of india is saying no no this is not good let's follow this only let's have an agreement between the companies problem solved so this part you will have to write here as an answer and then you will have to conclude this is how you frame the answer to main aapko dikhata hu that how exactly you should be framing your answer see guys this is one part which i wanted to discuss today and this is how we do normally in our current affairs classes whenever we do a topic related to mains we immediately after doing that topic we come in these kind of things see what is mentioned so this is a 150 word answer 150 word would mean 10 marks and that would be in typically around 7 minutes you are going to get around 7 minutes in the exam you are not going to get more than that why because you have to read the question also maybe you are little tired at that time because you have written the previous question so mind does not work with 100% efficiency every time every second it is not possible so roughly the writing time that you will get is roughly around 6 to 7 minutes in remaining time you have to think what to write So see how do you divide your answer? I'll tell you the jugar, the method of completing your answer on time. So see, that's your intro. In the intro, since it's a ten marks question, you should not write more than twenty to twenty-five words. You should try to avoid writing more than this. And what is the meaning of twenty-five words? Twenty to twenty-five in one line. How many words can you write? Roughly eight to nine. Which means that you have to write your intro in one, two, three lines. That's it. try to write it in three lines if four it's okay but try to write not more than in three lines so three to four is manageable here that's your intro and you should not give more than 1 minute to it in this 1 minute 
you have to write the intro and think about what you are going to write in the body also this structure should be there in your mind jaise the moment i read the question that question i will divide my answer sheet into this parts mentally what will i do intro body conclusion and then i will tell a rule to my mind that introduction should not be written beyond 1 minute so i'll start looking at my clock and i'll say 1 minute i will stop so i have given myself 7 minutes for this question the moment it's 1 minute whether i have written the intro or not i will stop because if i give more time to it body will be compromised that's the best way to do it so those of you who feel you are not able to complete your answer in time suppose you are taking 15 20 minutes to write this answer the mistake you are making is you are completing your answer then looking at time do the reverse you write your introduction give yourself 1 minute and tell yourself after 1 minute i'm going to stop so what will happen even if you have written two lines to stop so at least you have written two lines then you come to the body of the answer what are the ingredients of the body of the answer what do you write in the body of the answer first you write definitions if possible then you write meaning so suppose they are asking advance pricing agreement you write the meaning here if possible you write the name of the agency or committee which gave it so for this you have 2 minutes so not more than 2 minutes why because in this question there are two bodies first you have to define what is beps that's the first question dekhiye so you have to tell what is beps that's the first part and second body is this two bodies are there so <clears throat> since two bodies are there two minutes for one body which means that in two minutes explain what is beps in two minutes please write advance pricing agreement etc etc so what will happen 2 plus 2 4 minutes and this is 1 minute 5 1 minute conclusion again 25 to 30 words 6 one minute for your flow charts and examples if you feel there should be a flow chart so this makes 7 minutes so what is the best strategy to do look at your clock and see okay this is time 8:45 so till 8:46 in the exam keep your keep your watch there on the table next one minute you write the intro and then stop then you start writing what is the meaning or definition of beps you write it for 2 minutes what is beps 15 points you write then you stop so 2 minutes you keep looking at your watch 2 minutes stop even if you have been able to write half the definition of beps you should stop why because if you continue writing this this part you will never be able to complete and anyway your answer will be incomplete this page will be left for 10 marks you have two pages if you don't clock your every part of the answer then your next part of the answer which means this page will be completely blank because you will run out of time so what do you write in the body you mostly write definition meaning agency name and or you write steps impact or data so for example if somebody would ask you what are the steps to control black money then you write these steps etc what is the third thing that you should write flow chart if possible one flow chart in every question you should not write flow chart my experience says looking at the question these days that if there are 20 questions at least in six questions seven questions you can do a flow chart that's what i feel if you can do it in 10 questions great but i don't feel in 10 questions it is required in 7 8 questions 7 question 6 question if you do it's good enough if you can do in 10 questions also great so that's your flow chart an example whenever you write something that okay government of india has gone for a new system called safe harbor write an example diamond sector budget 2024 that will fetch you more marks so the this is how you should divide your body of the answer kaise karoge body divide read the question question has two parts one is explain what is beps and second is advance pricing agreement divide your body into 2 minutes 2 minutes look at the watch first 2 minutes over explanation of beps should be over next 2 minutes what is advance pricing agreement look at the watch time up don't write anything related to that then come to conclusion on this page not more than 1 minute should be given to conclusion even if it's one line 1 minute over why because you have to go to next question what is the beauty of this kind of uh, answer writing technique the beauty of this question <clears throat> answer writing technique is that you are not going to spend extra time so you will get an opportunity to write the next question and second beauty is that your one page will not be blank at least you will write something in every section of the answer which means on an average you will get extra marks you will get good marks but i have seen many people during the mains current affairs preparation classes etc i saw many of the candidates who have the experience of mains making one mistake what do they do they write beautiful introduction they write beautiful body but half the body time up so they will write introduction like this then they will write one part of the definition what is beps they will write till here then they will realize where do i write the next part time up space gone 
which means in this question itself, out of 10, you will get maximum two, one or two. That's it. Because you have not attempted the question well. And since you overspend the time, next question zero. So thoda, you have to be a little careful. So please time your sections. So <clears throat> do you have any blank sheet in uh, front of you, which I have to pass? Please write the BEPS part. I'm This is what we do in our current affairs classes. If you ask our students, in most of our current affairs classes, we do this. We will allow you to write the introduction and we look at the clock exactly one minute and then we would see what you have written. So, <clears throat> hand out the region. So, guys, please open your answer sheet and to my online students, please open your notebook and I'm giving you exactly one minute to write what is BEPS. Whatever you understood, please write what is BEPS. <clears throat> so, you have to write an introduction first. Introduction. For introduction, one minute and your time starts. Let everybody have it, then we'll start. So, guys, how do you write introduction? Can I give you one tip? In introduction, write generic things like why BEPS ka concept is important, who is doing it, the world is dominated by which companies these days, which I told you when I entered the class. That's a very dangerous figure, 60%, etc. etc. Remember? So that you have to write in your introduction. You have to introduce why BEPS is in the news. So your time starts now. Exactly one minute, online and offline. Please write an intro. And what will you write in the intro? That why the country is bothered about transfer pricing. What happened? Who is doing it? Which country is vulnerable, India or US? Write it in the introduction, please. And, and don't feel that you don't know it. Just write it whatever you feel. This is learning, guys. To my online friends, you can type it. I'll read it there. Or you can write in your uh, notebook also. When I tell you the answer, you'll know it. So to my students who are uh, watching me on YouTube, so guys, do the same thing. So please open your uh, notebook and in one minute, write the introduction, please. Done. So how should you write the introduction? Introduction should be like the preamble of the constitution where every important word should be there. Nothing should be explained. Every word should be there, but no explanation should be there because if you explain it, it becomes the body of the answer. So introduction time over. Now please change the paragraph and please write. I'm giving you one minute. Please write definition of BEPS. If you don't know 15 points, just write it has 15 points like transfer pricing. So please write what is BEPS. You can draw that diagram I gave you. Remember this diagram that tax base is this. From here, the tax is moved here. You can draw that diagram. Please write what is BEPS base erosion and profit shifting. Base erosion, profit shifting. So please write, BEPS happens through transfer pricing. Explain what is transfer pricing. That becomes your answer. Or did BEPS happen through transfer pricing? Attempt it, please. This is how you learn. They go, anyway, you will get the ready-made answer. That's not a point. Point is to learn in the class. Yes, Vinay, very good. When you are watching me on YouTube, right? Good point you said. NR, very good point. So please write the definition of BEPS and write that it has. It is done through mostly methods like transfer pricing. Then explain transfer pricing. 
So please write BEPS happens through transfer pricing and then explain transfer pricing. That transfer pricing is the price between associated companies or related companies. Right. And then the next part of the question. So you have some time. Please write. Complete it, please. Let me see what you're writing. And guys, this is exactly what we do in our current affairs program. We keep an eye over what you are writing in the class because this is the place to learn. Very nice. Take exercises seriously, please, because the best learning happens in the classroom. At home, the best thing that you can do is polish. Learning happens here. Create the diagram, please, those box diagrams. Good. Box diagram, please. You should immediately draw that. BEPS. Uh, you should definitely draw the box diagrams. And how does BEPS happen? Through transfer pricing. So you should def define the transfer pricing as well. <clears throat> okay, cool, done. Now the next part. You will see at the end some something really interesting will be seen in your answer sheets. I'm telling you this. You'll be so proud of yourself. If you follow this method, I'll show it to you. Now see, what is the next part? It says, how can advanced pricing agreement and safe harbor control this behavior of MNCs? And I told you that there are three methods through which government is trying to control. The first is advanced pricing agreement, second is safe harbor, and third is country by country reporting. Then I told you the beauty of all these three is that there is some sort of target given by government of India to the companies that why don't cross this limit. This is how government controls. But how will you start this part? The second body of the answer is steps taken by government to control BEPS. This should be the title of this part. First part is what is BEPS and transfer pricing? The second part should be, you should give a title. Please write, please start your second part of the answer. So first part is over. Second part is steps taken by government to control BEPS. Steps taken by government to control BEPS. What will be your opening line? What did government do to control BEPS? Transfer pricing regulations. In which year? 2001. Remember Supreme Court? Government went to Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, where is your regulation? 2001. So please write that in your answer. That transfer pricing regulation started from 2001. And some other steps were taken. And some other steps were taken. Which step? Number one, advanced pricing agreement. What did I tell you? In advanced pricing agreement, the company and the government tax authorities, they sign an agreement for how many years typically? Ah, normally for five years. That what price will be acceptable and what price will be treated as transfer price. That's it. That's what you have to write. That government and taxpayer, they agree to a certain price called as advanced price. Right? Which year? 2012. 2012. It's so easy to memorize how. 2012 advanced pricing, 2013 safe harbor. So what is done under advanced pricing? A certain price is decided for next five years and then they agree by updating the price every year. But what happens in safe harbor? A range is given. So please write safe harbor. In safe harbor you can write a range is given by the government based on operating cost. Remember the word operating cost. So you have to use that word. A range is given by the government based on operating cost. And the companies have to follow the range. Right? And then you have to write the name of the committee. That committee's name must be mentioned.
and then after writing that rangachari committee safe harbor what will you write as current affairs that government has included diamond sector under safe harbors diamond sector has been included under safe harbor what happens under safe harbor the government does not conduct unnecessary audits no troubling right so you can have your ease of doing business so you get right that unnecessary audits not conducted it promotes ease of doing business just you have to write two three lines on everything not details then then you have to write country by country reporting 2016 what will you write here it is a part of beps project 2016 it's a part of beps project 2016 please write it so that you can see if you are able to complete the answer it is a part of beps project 2016 for smooth data exchange for smooth data exchange for smooth data exchange and bachcho since you have used the word beps project you have to write two lines on it that under beps project there are 15 action points so you have to write this by changing the paragraph that under beps project there are 15 action points like transfer pricing rules equalization levy data sharing full stop india is following those rules india is following those rules so how will you create a diagram for this here dekhiye you can create a flow chart like this steps to control beps how will you write it as a something like this the first will be transfer pricing second will be advance price agreement safe harbor rules and then you can write country to country country by country reporting as a part of beps project then you can write it has 15 points that's your flow chart and here you can write the name of the committee right so rangachari committee you can mention this becomes your flow chart this type of flow chart is required what is the rule of flow chart in the exam it should not be messy it should not be chaotic don't start explaining the flow chart here flow chart should be explained later on if you start to make this bulky that advance pricing agreement is the agreement between government of india and tax payer for 5 years not required you are already writing it in the point so keep your diagram very simple crisp and non chaotic no once you have to use the full form and after that you can use the, but once you have to use the full form uske baad you can use the short form so this you write and now you please write the conclusion conclusion likhe bachcho please show me the conclusion what will you write in the conclusion please so for conclusion you are getting again 1 minute conclusion you have to write in 1 minute 25 to 30 words i gave you some conclusion i remember that india should have more multilateral and bilateral agreements for data sharing then i told you that safe harbor rule should be extended to other sectors also and then i told you that the profit margin should be adjusted regularly how can you fix profit of 25% for every day so for 6 months one year okay but then update it so write these things so you can write that tax revenue is important especially for developing countries hence we should control beps so more agreements between countries follow all the beps project 15 points and then include more sectors under safe harbor and then update your prices whenever required this you should write you create some good sentences out of it you will get good conclusion over conclusion time over so now see dekhiye aapko kuch milega 
have you written your answer like this roughly the beauty of this type of answer i told you i mean i i wanted to teach you this trick today because normally what i have seen is when people teach you answer writing they tell you complete your answer by 7 minutes i don't think that's the best strategy given the type of question these days why because these days the questions are application based how can you write the question by looking at total time you should divide your time into different parts that for example this part you know almost 60% of global business is through associated companies i told you remember two companies which are related so almost according to world economic forum 60% of global business happens through connected companies that's what we have written then they indulge in beps through transfer pricing especially in developing countries that's it so what have we said we have said most of the business in the world is through associated companies and they practice beps especially they hurt the developing countries we are a developing country so it matters to us that's the introduction how much time should you take 1 minute how will it happen through practice this will happen through practice so if you attend these kind of class wherever it doesn't matter if you are practicing at home also i believe it can be done at home also so if you are practicing it at home or in the classroom wherever you are doing it but make sure after 1 minute you stop and then you look at the body so what did you do first meaning of beps see what have we written in the beps use tax loopholes to shift profit so basic definition has been given and then you have to give this diagram of beps that this is how your profit is shifted here it requires a diagram and here you can see some space is left what are we writing steps to curb beps that's your second body of the answer this body 2 minutes this body 2 minute this body 1 minute introduction 1 minute body 2 minute what are we writing steps transfer pricing started in 2011 then apa advanced pricing agreement safe harbor and beps and then we have to create a flow chart here without explaining the flow chart so this we have to do theek okay? hai see we have created a space here so one beautiful thing about upsc answer writing you should create the diagram on one side and use the other side to complete your points and then how did you conclude you concluded by saying that indian safe harbor rule you know if india increases the coverage like we have done in diamond this is digital age data management is important so you please sign agreement with other countries also so that you can have good collection of data what did i tell you under beps how many countries are there 140 what about other 50 countries who are member of imf but they are not member of beps if you call them and tell them give data they will never give you the data imf and world bank have more than 190 members beps has 140 what about the remaining 50 they are not a part of this and they are saying sorry we will not cooperate so what should india do india should sign bilateral agreement with them and convince them boss if you sign this we will give you this 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 right we will give you the tickets of ipl matches something like this we should motivate them by telling them this is your conclusion so this was the trick to do answer writing all okay